16U All-Star game about to start. I'm Kyle, has been alongside Bob Vilsaway. It's 4.04 p.m., which means it's about some time for some 16U travel hockey. It's the red team against the blue team. Both games prior to this one went to overtime, and technically they were both 4-3 finals because the first game was a shootout. Second game was an actual overtime thriller. Thir I, only because I have no clue. I'll pick red so that you can have one team and I'll take the other team. What we learned in the first two games, that the red team, the blue team, it doesn't matter. Both teams are even, right? So um, we'll see what happens. I, I don't think the teams really necessarily have adjusted much in between the periods or between, um, you know, when the Zamboni comes out. I think it's just a matter of, you know, sometimes it's luck when the puck goes in. Both teams are trying. Sometimes, you know, tip-ins and deflections happen. Some goals you just can't stop. So I think what we're going to see is something very, very close. See, I think what it's safe to say is we won't see a 6 to nothing blowout, that's for sure. All right, we're going to take a break. National Anthem and starting lineups coming up next here on SBS, the broadcasting network for everyone. National Anthem about to start. Kyle Smith alongside Bob Vilsaway. Some notable players to watch out for. Noah Ingersoll, who will most likely start between the pipes for Blue. He had a 1.66 GAA in the playoffs. Nolan Sanderson, 95.8. Easton Bristow, 1.88 GAA. And Mitch Gowell in the playoffs had four goals. And here we go. National Anthem brought to you by SBN.
Good afternoon, everybody. Kyle Smith alongside Bob Dulce. It's the red team against the blue team. And partner, the last two games went to overtime. It's an encore performance. Can the third game go to overtime? And can the fourth and final game go to OT? Boy, wouldn't that be fun. The co cool thing about going to overtime also is the games are not running late as a result. They put plenty of time in between for everybody to get changed and get ready and get on the ice and for different fans to come in, different parents to come in. What a, a fantastic event this was. In between games, we got a little bit of pizza and, and something to drink, so that was all good as well. It's a great venue. A lot of fun for these players. So, partner, it might be a goalie battle. Nolan Sanderson, a save percentage of over 95% in the postseason coming into this one. But the problem is blue team might have the better goalies. Noah Ingersoll, 1.66 GAA in the postseason, and a save percentage of 92%. The problem was his offense wasn't there for him. The team just went two and two in that postseason. Easton Bristow, not too shabby himself, 1.88. So if red team scores today, and they probably will because they're all-stars, you might want to keep the puck as a souvenir. <laughs> yeah, right, maybe so. But I think what we're going to find is a 4-2 final, just like the first two games, you know, with the overtime, of course. So taking the face off. And what we've been noticing is you know, the 14s played much better than 14s. The 15s played much better than 15s. Now we're going to see what 16s one more year can do. Faster, bigger, stronger, smarter, more face-offs nine seconds into the game. <laughs> <laughs> Another face-off nine seconds in the game is no choice but to cover that up in Ingersoll. Smart choice. And it'll be another face-off. Bledsoe will take it for red. Instead, it's won by blue. And after it was Penn Russell out behind the net of Ingersoll. Now over to the corner. And then out behind the net trying to backhand it out in front. Backhanded shot, an easy pad save for Ingersoll. 
And a beautiful poke check by Bledsoe. He gets it, trying to set it up in front as he was trying to feed it to Deegan. And then over to the blue line at neutral ice. Getting it was blue. And here comes Kuntz. Kuntz with it. Off the corner after it was Piasecki. Now over to the point. That shot very wide. And it doesn't matter what age group, partner. <laughs> Players are struggling getting that puck on net. Well, clearly they need to make the net bigger. You know, like a soccer goalie net. then some of those shots would go in. And the players are smartly aiming for the corners, upper right, upper left, you know, lower right, lower left. You know, when the goalie butterflies out, that's not quite as open. Um, but if you can get the, the puck, you know, higher than the blocker or lower than the blocker or upper or below the glove on the left side, that's where you want to aim. Certainly not the middle of the net, that's where the goalie's breadbasket is. One of our sponsors today, Glenview Stars. Check them out at glenviewstarshockey.com. And is that going to be an icing? Yeah, it will be. I'm a little surprised you didn't wash it off, but yes, icing. A lot of shout outs that we have to announce in today's broadcast. Another one of our sponsors, the Chicago United Hockey League. One of the coolest logos you'll ever see. You got the red, white, and blue, and then you got the hockey puck as it darts its way around the skyline. Yeah, this is a great logo. Of course, it looks like the Chicago Police logo or the, you know, the soccer team logo. And the pretty light blue with the four stars. And how many face-offs is that? It's got to be at least three. Let's see, six, yeah. 26. Uh, yeah, face-off, save, icing, icing, four. Yeah, in 16 seconds, well, a minute and 16 seconds. Yeah. So every 30 seconds, you don't need any line change, just need a face-off. <laughs> face-off coming up. It's won by Blue. Over to the blue line, Destano. And then over to the hash mark, trying to tap it out is Red. Destano, he was after it quick as a cat to keep that puck in. Now over to the faceoff circle, trying to get it off the boards and does to Red. Now back over the point, Blue with it. Wrist shot, right in the glove, easy save. Yeah, it wasn't easy save, there just wasn't any traffic in front, so he kept trying to hold on to the puck longer and longer, hoping for more traffic, and unfortunately it was just too far away. Finally blasted the shot, relatively high risk shot, easy save, but they got a faceoff in that zone though. It might be a goalie battle. It might be one of those one nothing games. You got Sanderson starting for red. You got Ingersoll between the pipes for blue. Well, there's good goalies, but there's good offensive players. There's going to be some defensive breakdowns. Too much, you know, trying to score from the from the point, and then there's going to be a two on one fast, you know, odd man break and <laughs> fast break. Yeah, there's going to be stuff happens. Vaccaro after we had Vaccaro in the pregame show, and now played by Carr as he taps it off the boards to his teammate in Deegan. And I really like this uh, this blue jersey versus red jersey thing. That just never happens in the NHL because one team's always their, the dark color and the other one's always white. So you never see like Chicago versus Toronto when they're in their dark colors. Good Off steal. the boards. And then tapped over to Corkin. Oh, bad pass. Oh, Jets yes. saw it all the way. Yeah, that was not a good pass. They should have dumped it back in. But that's easy for us to say up here. Out in front. It's always a lot easier playing armchair hockey than regular hockey. And here we go, chance for red. But two defenders, and backward skating is blue, is able to cut off the offensive player. It was Nick Carver and Frank Mandarino. Yeah, earlier we saw the 14 split the defense like that for a game-winning goal, or game-leading goal near the end of the game. Right. But kind of the difference between 14U and 16U, it, it changes quite a bit, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, well, these guys are amazingly fast and certainly bigger. Out to the blue line, backward skating. I mean, it's so tough being a defensive partner. Guys going right at you and you're backward skating with the puck and stick handling with it. Yes, it is amazing. And then if they, you know, go around you, you got to turn and skate with them. I mean, some of these defensemen are so good. They're they're faster backward skating than I am forward skating. <laughs> Spin around on a beauty. As with the puck right now is Jack Genesis. Now over to the point. Keeping it in well that time was Jack Volley. Over out behind the net. Off the pad. That was a pass right, by the way. Well, again, it's never a mistake to put the you know, center of the puck right in the slot right there. Maybe it bounces off something. Maybe it gets deflected. Uh, you know, in this case, they're getting the face off out of it. Not so bad either. 
coaches generally say shoot it towards the net. You look for deflections, rebounds. You know, that's when the goals happen. It's never, not rare, I mean, not never, but rarely just a clean shot that goes into the net. A big shout out and a special one to Joey Bledsoe of the U16 Bledsoe. Orland Park Vikings. Bledsoe, I wonder if there's a relative that used to play football. Well, hopefully there's uh, not a player on the ice named Brady or Bledsoe won't get much playing time. <laughs> oh, no, that was great. You know, when you don't have a girlfriend, you have too much time to think <laughs> up these puns. That's over to the, the, the red line. That one timer, nice pad save, rebound try, couldn't get it on net. What well, would save us all then if we would just get a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> he gets an E for effort, but an F for failure on getting it on net. Oh, like that one? That wasn't even close. Wouldn't have been on net if it was a 100 foot long net. <laughs> yeah, would have missed the soccer net as well. You know? As much as we love the movie Happy Gilmore, there's a reason why Gilmore never made the hockey team. Doesn't matter how hard you shoot it, if you can't get it on net, you're not going to be on the ice. Oh, good check there. Prevented him from being able to get to the puck after he just got rid of it. There's a lot more mid-ice activity here in this game. Yeah, Russell, his shot. Man, that missed too. Well, it got deflected by the goalie. The question is, was it still high when it got deflected, right? I don't think the goalie touched it. I think that was a clean miss. We'll have to play that back and see. That's the beauty of this. You can play the, the on-demand version, get the, you know, play things in slow motion. Over to the blue line, Bledsoe, and Redwell by blue chance, and couldn't get it on net. I will say the Steel TD back here has done an outstanding job of some of the replays. We have a, a, a you know screen up in front of us, so we can actually watch the game up there or on the ice. And then we yeah. see a lot of the replays afterwards. That's a great job. No surprise here, partner. Right now it's a defensive battle. Now we still got a lot more hockey left, but don't be surprised if we have nothing, nothing going into the third period. Well, you always think that way, right? Well, the teams are feeling themselves out and stuff like that. And there's a lot of you know center ice activity here. And all, you know, also the players getting used to each other and where they are going to be on the passing. When they play on their normal team, the communication, of course, is better because they're used to playing with each other. But here, the, the play, players are more skilled, but they haven't played with each other yet. It, and they'll, they'll get better as the periods progress. Off the board, stolen away by Blue. As with it right now is McLean. Out behind the net, wraparound try. Red well by Red. The net stays intact. And then off the glass. Up in the air, puck, here we go, two on one, right on target with the pass shot. Oh my goodness, get it on net, please. <laughs> That's just one shot on goal thus far in the game for Red. They have more misses on the net than shots. Palazzo plays it as he's guarded closely by Carver. Bouncing it off the boards, his intended target, Mandarino, then back over to Carver, and then right on target, Williamson, in stride on the pass. Here comes Williamson, backhanded pass, red wall by red, still loose in the slot, and can't keep it in. Carver is after it. Yeah, it was kind of like a no-look pass, but what a great exit out of the, their own zone. Man, that was an interesting play. It went off the skate of a blue player. Red was going to be offside, but because it ricocheted off the blue player, no offside. And the rest didn't want to blow the whistle anyway. We don't want him to blow the whistle. It's fun to watch the end-to-end -end action. These players are good, Bob. Almost as good as you when you played hockey. <laughs> past the red line, now past the blue line. Toe drag attempt, excellent job playing the body by Ryan Patska. Now Jet after it, out in front. Trying to send it over to Grinton at the blue line. And now to the other blue line. Jet was after it. Vaccaro trying to steal. Otani calling for it. That's Othan, actually. And then over to the blue line. Yeah, you're used to the Angels now. The yeah, Dodgers, like, There's right? no way his last name's Otani. That's good. It's not. <laughs> and then over to Bristow. So it's actually Bristow. Sorry, 35 Sanderson and Ingersoll for blue. There's actually a lot of hard names to pronounce, on, the, especially on the red team. I was looking at them earlier, and I'm like, uh-oh, is it this or is it that? Look Pass out. the stick, breakaway chance. Got
Back to the action. I think we got excited when the goal happened. As that's off the boards, one nothing lead for Red. Off the blue line, out of the other blue line. At the faceoff dot, backhanded off the boards, and then over to the corner. Out behind the net, blue team with it. Here another, comes blue. Yeah, another two on one break, the, forgot the puck. Backhander in the slot, sending it up in front at the faceoff circle, shot and a save, right in the bread basket. So we're gonna face off as a result. Yeah, bigger, stronger, and faster. That's what we're seeing in this game. A little bit more defensive, harder to score goals, but we do have one goal. So at this rate, we'll have what, six goals, which puts with the 4 2 final. Face off, red team won it to the corner and getting a stick on it was Sanderson. To the blue line, backhanded out in the slot, picked up by red as it's right on target with the pass. Gatwell, his shot wide, Ingersoll saw it all the way. At this level, it seems like everything is contested better than the 14s and the 15s did, which of course off makes the, sense. Yeah, off the stick and after it was Prisgintas. Good thing that wasn't late and there was an empty net there. And then over that time to the blue line. Oh, that was to the face, and they're not going to call the penalty. I'll let you call, Bob, but it sure looked like that should have been roughing. Yeah, I, I would not have called anything, but no, no argument is to the face. It's a big call, but you know what? A penalty is a penalty, and you can't be checking people up in the cage like that. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, right. I do think, though, that it's early in the game. They're going to you know, give some latitude to the players. Maybe they'll tighten yeah. down later in the game, but perhaps. You, you can't think like that as a ref, though. You have to be consistent from the opening faceoff to the last one. And no one home, and it's a line change for Blue. Three defenders around it, but Gavel still with it. Gavel, he's got an open space, and shot goes wide. Did a good job to, to get away from those defenders to, to get that shot. And taken off the puck well by Piasecki. That's well the, put. That well, got to clear the zone though. And that puck still loose, still in the slot. Still bouncing. Gathered by Rhett. And puck stolen away by Blue. Here comes Mandarino, past the blue line. Mandarino shot in a glove, and he'll cover it up. I think that's the right decision. Uh, he didn't have enough time to place the puck past the end line. Well, there's a bunch of right decisions right in a row there, okay? So he gets the puck, shoots it high at the goalie. The goalie's going to glove it. There's not going to be anybody in front. It's not going to be deflected or tipped. It's not going in the net. But he gets a face-off out of it. So now his whole entire blue team is going to be in the offensive zone. And similarly, probably wouldn't make sense for the goalie to catch it and drop it behind the net and keep going. Yeah, there just wasn't any teammates around him quickly where he could dump it off. Accepted and... There's a chance out in front. And how about the first goal of the game? It went, goes off the glass and right on the tape for a breakaway and then scoring the goal. Yeah, there's a lot of action at center ice in this game, more so than we've seen before for sure. Williamson with it. He lost it. After it is gas off in the slot. Losing it at the blue line. Here comes Blue. That shot, gas off. Another good glove save and a beauty by Nolan Sanderson. Yeah, another good save. Another face-off offensive zone for Blue. They got to win these face-offs, though. They're in the offensive zone. Every time you lose the face-off, then you got to go back and play defense for a while before you're going to get that puck back. But if you can get the face-off, you get that first shot, look for a deflection. You should have a, somebody in front of the goal. If you get hungry after the game, go to Beef Shack, home of the cheesy beef. Go to beefshack.com for more information. Not just any beef. It's got to be the cheesy beef. Don't get too cheesy on me. <laughs> oh, no. Better get that girlfriend. 
I mean, that would be the place to meet her, right? We'd both be lame, a.k.a. cheesy. <laughs> and we both ordered the, the, the cheesy beats. Kid's happy. He's on camera. I like this, finding the fans with the cameras. Face off one by Red. That was a clean win. Uh, they just can't do much with it, though. Here comes Blue again. Jet showing off the Jets today. And that shot right into the glove. It took a weird carom and then right into the breadbasket of Sanderson. We've seen this a few times. The puck goes behind the net, off the boards, and comes back out bouncing. And the goalie this time did a great job catching the ball off of a bounce. We saw one bounce over a stick earlier, and it was an easy goal for the player out in front. So shots behind the net with some pace. They bounce back. They get in front of the, the goal. If you have a, an offensive player there, you can score. And I love that name, Jet, for a hockey player. Of course, Bobby Hole's nickname was the Golden Jet. Yeah, and we had a Golden on the, on the rink earlier today. So we have to put them next to each other and take a photo. Are you saying they're two halves of a Bobby Hole? That shot <laughs> couldn't get the... <laughs> two halves of a Bobby Hole. Oh, man. I think you're on a roll. You are absolutely on a roll. I'm not on a roll, and stop buttering me up. <laughs> that shot. I think we shouldn't have given you that Mountain Dew between games. <laughs> I'm not a Mountain Dew fan. I'm more of a Cherry Cola fan. Oh, that was not offsides. Sprecker's my go-to drink. Okay, we got a two-on-one coming. Make it a two-on-three. That shot, pad save. That's the right idea, though, right? You go wide side of the net, and you hope you get that nice rebound. It, 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 here we go again. Uh, might have been offsides there. Yeah, exactly right. They had a two on one. Yes, there were two trailers, right? So you shoot off the wide leg and hope for the bounce, you know, the rebound right to the right side player. If so you shoot it on the near side, you don't get that rebound. And he couldn't pass it because the defense played the play perfectly. So hockey sometimes is a game of physics and a game of geometry. So the two on one, so thinking physics and geometry, you shoot it to the right side of the net and it ricochets to your teammate. So should your teammate skate slower so that, you know, if you, if you shoot it hard enough, it's going to go off the pad hard. And it's going to be the puck's going to dribble out further away from the net. So the, the other winger skates slower so that he gets a nice rebound try right on his stick. Yeah, I, I hear exactly what you're saying, but I think the, the coaching technique there is you want to go in at the same pace, same speed as the, the, the player on the left. So you're going in in tandem together. So, so should the player shoot a little softer so the rebound try goes right on your teammates? Team? No, you have to get, yeah, again, I hear you right. But you want to shoot it fast and get used to playing at a faster pace. If you shoot it slower, the defenses will react, goalie will get it. No, you got you to play yeah. at a fast pace to be at the highest right. level you can. It's kind of like learn to ride a bike, but learn to ride the bike fast. And that's why practice is so important. You know what your teammate can do on those snapshots, so you know how to target it as the winger on the two-on-one. And, of course, as a goalie, you want to try to make sure that that angle isn't such that there is going to be a rebound. Right. If you can, you try to save it so that the puck dribbles out to the end line, not right in front of the net. Exactly, right. Or, yeah, into the but, end line, into the but, corner, right, yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's how accuracy and being that snipe, that, uh, that, that, that snipe shooter is so important. You, you use perfect physics so that no matter how good the goal is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go off the pad directly to your teammate's stick. Yeah, and you have so little time to react. You almost have to get to the spot where you think the puck is going to go before the shot gets made. So you really got to pay attention to the body language of the shooter. Yeah, and that's all chemistry, right? And collaboration. The more time you practice with each other, not just at practice, but on ice, off ice conditioning, hanging out with each other after school, after <laughs> practice, the more you know your teammate the better those two-on-ones are going to go. That shot, a nice one by Ingersoll. You're going to have to do a lot harder to score on him because he's a fabulous goalie. Well, they both are, and so far we've seen some long shots, and they are handled effortlessly. I, I, a little bit more pace on the, the slap shots perhaps would help, but the goalies are going to eat those up. you got to get a deflection. Or Reminds me of those old uh, Stanley Cup days where Patrick Waugh was a net for the Avalanche and then Curtis Joseph, and who was the other uh, Red Wings goalie that was really good? They won, he won a couple Hasek? of cups with them. Hashik was there, too, but there was another guy before him. Oh, Osgood. Osgood. Yeah. yeah. Osgood had some good years with the Blues, too. Here's a chance for a red shot. Oh, boy, that wasn't even close to the net. So how many times do you think Osgood made a save, and he would then get up and say, Osgood? What do you think of that save, Coach? Was it bad? No, nah, Osgood. Great steal. You think uh, when Patrick Waugh entered the NHL, his GM said, hey, here's your new goalie, Patrick Roy? <laughs> I bet you that happened many times. <laughs> or uh, Steve Iserman's first game as a Red Wing. Hey, here, make sure to pass it to this guy. He goes by Wiser Man. 
Chance for Blue, that shot wide. Messier instead of Messier. Here we go, two on one for Red. Stays on side well, Gowell's shot, save. Rebound in the slot, it's still loose. Finally, Blue gets it. Same thing, Blue to Sunder stayed right in the middle of that two on one, kind of making it difficult to make that cross court, cross court, cross, cross court. court pass, right, in, in the way. But if that pass can be made, it's a, you know obviously almost an open net. I guess you could say frozen court because uh, some ice rinks are also basketball court. <laughs> pass the blue line, Gowell, Gowell. And I, I would have rather him shoot instead of pass there. Meanwhile, Gasoff with it. And he needs to turn on the gas. It was easy for his uh, <laughs> defenders to get to him there. That's it. No more Mountain Dews. <laughs> so a low-scoring game, really. You know, just one nothing going into the you know 143 to go in this period. Notice I called it a period instead of a, a quarter. To the end line, played right now by Red. It was off oh, the stick no. of Carr and. We're going to see another icing. That's a no, slow moving too puck. Slow. We need Played the Zamboni. by Patska. Yeah, we need the Zamboni to speed the ice up. I mean, partner, Blue has to be creative because if they just go along with their normal game plan, Red has some very good goalies. So they got to find a way to be creative to score today. Well, shots and deflections and big men in front like that. Nice pass. Even better finish right in front. Finishing the play, Freddie Piasecki, two goal lead for Red. And that was late in the first period, so now we're gonna have a final score of six to nothing. You multiply <laughs> that two times three periods, right? So it's gonna be a shutout. Like you said, Blue's gonna have to figure out a way to score. Shoot it wide, hope for deflection, a redirection, rebound. That might be all that Aaron Tinker and Nolan Sanderson need, by the way. Well, it's, it's so much dependent on the defense, too. But, of course, we got all-star defenders. That shot, blocker, and a good one. It just shows you, man, when you don't capitalize on your opportunities, you put so much pressure on your goalie to do everything for you. Well, it's it, yeah, yeah, you need everybody. It's a team game, right? So you need the goalie, you need the defense to be at the top of their game, you need somebody at the other end to put the puck in the other net. So it's just that's why it's so, so much fun to play this game or to watch this game. The teamwork is over the top to be successful. Face-off coming up, it'll be Freddie Piasecki who scored to make it 2-0. And Corkin cheats up. Right off the face-off shot, Ingersoll couldn't freeze it. Boy, there was a couple of good opportunities from Red. As Braden Tillett had the, he had the rebound try, as so, Tillett's still with it. Yes, yeah, so Red has a two-goal lead, and you'd have to say kind of advantage with the, the puck control. Nice move that time by Carr. Yeah, you just got to worry about that because if you do lose the puck, then it's a two-on-one going the other way. Yeah, as long as you don't pinch. But, I, you know, it's also an all-star game. You want them to have fun. You know, just backward skating the entire time as a defenseman can get pretty boring. Well, and you've got the more skilled defensemen who know how to pitch and know, and pinch and know when to pinch. Right? right, and remember, these are talented centers. So just because their defenseman pinches doesn't mean the center's going to forget to get back into the play and cover his spot. Right, right. Yeah, I've always thought in the future hockey is going to be not one of with positions, kind of like basketball, right? Eventually, yeah. now everybody just has all the skills, and you rotate like on defense. You, know, you just yeah. rotate whoever is open next, and so if you're a defender, then all of a sudden you're a forward, then you rotate the center. Yeah. But at the same time, there are forwards that are decent at getting back, you know, covering for a defense. But but like, for example, when Sidney Crosby goes one on one with, with Jonathan Taves in his prime. Like, Taves might lose that battle 95 times out of 100 because he's not a defenseman. But when but Sidney Crosby's going up against a defenseman like Eric Carlson one-on-one, -on -one, I think Carlson has a better chance of winning that battle. Meanwhile, that does it for the period. Blue team trailing 2 nothing. What can they do in terms of adjustments to get back in this game? Yeah, it's, it's gonna, yeah. It's, it, first off, they got to stop the, this red attack, for one. So, and, and secondly, I hate to say they're going to have to pinch, but really I think it's just going to be a matter of continue to shoot the, the puck on that, hope for deflections, redirections, put a big body in front of the goalie and try to screen them. It's, it's typically you know, nothing different than every team does, but you're going to have to execute or get lucky or something to get back in this game. I don't think it's going to be one of you change your strategy. Maybe you, uh, you've now seen the first lines together for the first period. As a coach, you might make an adjustment and decide, well, maybe these two teammates would work better together for some reason. You know, maybe an adjustment like that could be made, but two goals to 
you know, they're not out of it, but they're also getting outshot by a little bit. We'll take a break. More hockey action coming up next here on SBS. Second period about to start. Kyle Smith alongside uh, Bob Vilsaway. Eight minute 30 period. We go to the Zamboni, then we have an 8.30 remaining. So we split it in half in terms of the Zamboni. And the ice is getting a little chippy here. It chipped up. So it's, it, you know, that 8.30 can't happen fast enough to put the Zamboni out there and speed the, the ice up a little bit. It's amazing how frozen puck, frozen rubber puck, and a frozen ice pond, <laughs> we'll call it, right? Yeah. And the puck still bounces all over the crate, all over the place. The text line's open, by the way. Your favorite high school, college, or NHL memory, text 330-957-7653. And it's been a busy day for Freddie Piasecki. He's got a goal, and he's won five out of his seven faceoffs. When I was just looking at the, the shots on goal leader for red, it appears to be uh, Mitch Gowell with three. No surprises there, that shot right in the breadbasket. Oh, boy. That kind of looked like, uh, man, what was that guy's name? Oh, uh, Luis Mendoza from D2, the Mighty Ducks, <laughs> where he, he didn't know how to stop. Yeah, I, I, I know I laughed right there, but, you know, that has to hurt when you're going with your knees on the ice, no way to stop before you hit the boards at, you know, 50 miles an hour face first. Then we have a, just a couple leaders on the blue team for shots on goal, Gasoff and Ewan. Yeah, uh, right now, according to our live stats, it's been pretty dominating right now for red team against blue for the faceoffs. Nine yep. faceoffs, one to 14 loss for blue. And then 11 to 14 in terms of red. Well, it has to be the same on both sides, so yeah. there's a, a boo boo in there somewhere. I was hoping you wouldn't see that. Unless the green team got two, you know, face-off wins yeah. somewhere along the way. Over to the end line, over to the corner, as it's played by Ackerson. He's had a quiet day thus far. Do you like the current all-star game format for the NHL, or would you like them to change things up a little bit? No, I think they've done absolutely an outstanding job to make the, the games relevant and the players try. Whereas, you know, baseball, it's just not real anymore. Football, it's, you know, it's, it's gone, right? No, I, I think the hockey all-star game has done, you know, the best out of all the sports. Well, back in the day, before the year 2017, the all-star game from 2003 to 2016, it used to count for home field advantage throughout the World Series, that shot. And for some teams, it didn't matter. Yeah, for most teams, it didn't matter. You kind of knew which couple of teams were going to make the playoffs at that point. Right. I mean, one of the best World Series ever played, that Giants-Royals World Series, and the Giants won game six and seven on the road. Over to the blue line. Of course, the Cubs, the last year that uh, it mattered in terms of the All-Star game, the Cubs won game six and seven on the road. Over out behind the net, as it's played right now by Blues' Nick Carver. Apologize, it's Robert Gassoff now over to the neutral zone. Over to McLean, off the boards. After it is Williamson, and red team able to stay on side. Now after it is Bazzoli. Bazzoli plays it off the hash mark, trying to keep it in, but couldn't was Blasso. And now over into the blue zone. With it is Patska, and Patska just offloads it to the end line, drops it off near the blue line. To the other blue line as blue still on the attack right in oh. front how about that pass and i'd like to see the goalie there go up and get that puck and freeze it uh, well yeah perhaps but that was a perfectly feathered ahead pass on the tape pushes the puck forward at the blue line as stolen away by saunders 
Now to the other blue line on the four check is blue at the face off circle trying to set up in front in the slot shot. And good save that time by Sanderson. Man, has he been great today. Off the boards. Yeah, I think that's one of those saves where the puck hit him. <laughs> and then the pressure is on Tinker if this remains a shutout going into 8.30 remaining in the second period because we assume Tinker is going to play the last 25.30. Can Tinker for the last 25 minutes and 30 seconds maintain the shutout? Well, that's a great question to ask too. Okay, would you rather be the goalie that starts in when you, the score is 0-0? Or would you rather be the goalie that comes in at the halfway point, you're either ahead 2-0 or behind 2-0. Which situation would you rather be in? Because if you're uh, ahead 2-0, you could be the GOAT pretty easily. If you're behind 2-0, well, there's really nothing to lose. Where do you want to be that first goalie when it's always 0-0? We did uh, select as one of the stars of the game, one of the three stars of the game, the goalie that started for one of the teams earlier today. Yeah, Preston was fabulous. Centered. As that shot blocked, loose puck in the slot. As that's right on target, trying to split through the D. Saunders sees it all the way and he gets it. Bouncing off the boards, puck in stride. As it was off the backhand, backward skating is Vaccaro. As he was trying to get it to Grinton, puck accepted at the faceoff circle, obtained behind the net. Acquired by Reds, Joey Bledsoe. I see that that thesaurus I gave you has come in handy. And now on the tape at the blue line, Rister wide. And puck circles its way and finds its way to the neutral zone. Here we go. Break away for Red. Gowell shot. Beautiful save that time by Ingersoll. That might be the save of the game, at least keeping well, blue in this game. I think I'd replay that. To me, it looked like it hit the side of the net. Good job by Ingersoll using his big body to force a tough backhanded shot. Ingersoll goes quick, post to post. Can't be lazy between the creases, got to be very athletic. Have you ever seen the commercial where uh, the team starts a 350-pound goalie? And he's yes. Like, I, you know, funny you said that. I was thinking about that earlier. So what happens if you put a sumo wrestler between the pipes? Can the other team score fewer goals as a result? Well, sumo wrestler is athletic, though. Well, sumo wrestler is kind of like an offensive lineman. Well, so if you put a sumo, sumo wrestler in the pipes who can skate, right. well, the, com the commercial was like a 350-pound average Joe that they put between the pipes. <laughs> and that, uh, are they going to call a penalty on that? I didn't see his arm go up. Arm it went up. Like but it's like pulling somebody, doesn't it? I thought I saw a cross check. No, nope, he was just pulling him off the bench right, for the so faceoff. Yeah, they're just going to call a... Uh, Icing. No, actually, uh, what? Uh, delayed offside. Right. Anyways, face off, no penalty. Piasecki will take the face off. One by Blue. We don't want no stinking penalties. That time it was definitely icing, and Eric Ewing not happy about it. That's a nice shot. Look at look at those players on the bench. Gasoff, Williamson. Yeah, I like that Romer camera. Camera on the wireless connection can go anywhere. And I also like that the cameras have been panning in the crowd a little bit. Face off, one by Red. Nice win, but just not able to get the shot on that from Ackerson. It's a real nice facility to play. Well, this is where the professional Chicago Steel team plays, yeah. so it's a great facility for them. A lot of teams play here. Marmion plays here. That shot, loose puck, almost went in. Yeah, I think Aurora is another one that plays yep, here. Aurora University. It's a famous ice arena. Palazzo after it. I mean, that's a nice Italian last name. <laughs> Reminds me of Steve Palazzo, who does a lot of work for Pro Football Focus. Ewing with it. I think it's Palazzo, right? Is that how you pronounced it? Let's see. It's written P-A-L-A-Z-Z-O-L-O. -A -A -Z -Z -O -O. Palazzo? Pal Palazzo. No, I think it's pronounced Palazzo. I haven't been to Italy, but I've dreamt of going to Italy, so I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Stolen away by Red. That shot off the side of that, that time it clearly was. But I play a doctor on TV. Just like Doogie Hauser, Neil Patrick Harris. I've never been a doctor, but I played one as a kid for five years. Did you watch, do you ever watch um, Doogie Hauser or uh, How I Met Your Mother? No, because both of those TV shows have commercials. Well, every TV show has commercials. Well, so I watch movies, not now, TVs. Now Netflix and Peacock have commercials. Oh, that know. shot and covered up well by Ingersoll. 
at least they put a little timer up on the side, you know, 32 seconds, you know how long you, you have. That save is brought to you by the Chicago United Hockey League, one of our many sponsors today. So shots are 13 to 11, and the team with 13 shots, the red team, has two goals. So those next two shots from blue should go in. Another one of our sponsors is Bruns & Bruns, certified public accountants. Go to brunsaccounting.com or dial 815-485-5656. Also, this game is brought to you by Precision Dent Removal. Go to dentremovalchicago.com or dial 708-608-1036. I always want to make some kind of a joke with that company named Dent Removal. So it's on some of these checks, <laughs> I think there's dents on some of these players afterwards. I feel like Richard Dent needs to be on the board of directors there. <laughs> Off the boards. Wasn't ready for that pass, and he'll have to retreat into his own zone. Puck acquired at neutral ice. Accepted. No and, one was able to get it. And icing. Acquired and accepted. First time I ever uh, saw the word Thoris, I thought it was I thought it was pronounced the Saurus. Oh yeah, right. I'm not sure I know how to pronounce that now still. And then the first time I ever ordered a Euro, I said one gyro, please. Uh, yeah, or a gyro or something, right? But I never said GIF. I always said GIF. I have never been and never will be a GIF guy. Two on one now for Red. Shot. He scores. Face off one, and then over to the boards of this neutral ice. Stolen by Blue to the corner, set up in front.
Plato's Closet has athletic wear from all the top brands. Um, joggers, anyone? Our prices will get you moving, and we'll pay cash for your stuff. Buy and sell right here at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet has athletic wear from all the top brands. Um, joggers, anyone? Our prices will get you moving, and we'll pay cash for your stuff. Buy and sell right here at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet has athletic wear from all the top brands. Um, joggers, anyone? Our prices will get you moving, and we'll pay cash for your stuff. Buy and sell right here at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet has athletic wear from all the top brands. Um, joggers, anyone? Our prices will get you moving, and we'll pay cash for your stuff. Buy and sell right here at Plato's Closet. It's June 9, 2010. Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final is taking place between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Philadelphia Flyers. The final result will be an overtime win in Philadelphia. If the Flyers end up victorious, they'll still have to win a Game 7 in Chicago. 
It's a 3-3 tie in the first overtime, meaning this has been a moderate offensive explosion with some decent defense and goaltending squeeze in between this hockey contest. This is a huge game for Blackhawks fans as their favorite hockey team has been a laughing stock in the Western Conference for most of the previous decade. For the Flyers, they're looking to bring back Stanley Cup glory to the city of brotherly love for the first time since the 1970s. To truly understand the importance of what happens next, we need to hit that left button on the VCR. In other words, we need to rewind. The Blackhawks are an overtime goal away from cementing their legacy in NHL history. But for a franchise who used to not even televise its home games, this seemed like a pipe dream even five years ago. Known for his severe cheapness, Blackhawks former owner Bill Wirtz decided to cancel all home broadcast agreements with network and cable television outlets in 1992. According to Wirtz and the Wirtz Corporation as a whole, home broadcasts were, quote, unfair to the team's season ticket holders, unquote. And as crazy as this decision was by Wirtz, fan attendance increased during the mid-1990s. Incredibly, without normal home broadcasts and overall television brand awareness about the team, the Hawks averaged over 19,300 fans during the mid-1990s at the United Center. This is how it worked. WGN and other media outlets couldn't broadcast the Blackhawks games at the United Center. But if a national broadcasting network such as ESPN decided to telecast the game, a Blackhawk fan could purchase Hawk Vision, a subscription network worth $29.99 per month. Then you could watch the ESPN broadcast of Blackhawks vs. Red Wings at the United Center on normal cable television. It was pretty confusing to be sure, and as you know, the internet wasn't big back then. If you were a big hockey fan and wanted to know about the Blackhawks, you either had to go to the game or wait for the hockey highlight on SportsCenter. Even then, hockey coverage wasn't big on ESPN, so it was in your best interest to purchase a ticket at the UC. So the fans kept supporting the Blackhawks even though they couldn't watch their favorite team on TV. However, the product on the ice wasn't so great. As if it were a curse from the hockey gods, the Hawks kept finding different ways to choke in the playoffs. An original six team, the Hawks were at one time the second most cursed original six franchise. The New York Rangers went titleless from 1940 until 1994, and the Hawks now find themselves in the same place as the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Maple Leafs and the Hawks have not hoisted Lord Stanley's Cup since the 1960s decade. For the Hawks, it's been even worse. They haven't won it all since 1961, and before that, Chicago went 23 years without hoisting the Cup. The Maple Leafs have been a borderline disaster since 1967, but at least the Leafs were a dynasty in the 60s. The Hawks were lucky to even win the 1961 Stanley Cup. So yeah, the Hawks have pretty much been mediocre or worse since 1961. However, there were moments when the franchise seemed destined for championship glory. The worst moment for Chicago hockey fans was the 1971 Stanley Cup Final against the hated Montreal Canadiens. Without air conditioning at Old Chicago Stadium, the Hawks were the home team during Game 7 of the Finals against the Canadiens. Jumping out to an early 2-0 lead, legendary netminder Tony Esposito couldn't stop Jock Lamar's 60-foot away snapshot, giving the Canadians their first goal of the contest. Chicago Tribune writer Bob Verde said there was a humid haze hung over the ice, but Esposito refused to blame the rink's lack of air conditioning on the soft goal he gave up. He had a point since Lamar's shot was nearly from the center line. The Canadians never looked back and scored twice more to upset the Hawks and win 3-2 on Chicago's home ice. Since then, the Hawks have never been closer to winning the Cup as they were that day in 1971. That is, until tonight anyway. As painful as it was in 1971, Hawks fans who were still alive in 1992 had to be devastated at what happened next at Belfour and Dominic Hasek. Incredibly, Eddie the Eagle, Belfour, and Dominic the Dominator Hasek were both on the Blackhawks at the same time. Two future Hall of Fame goalies were both on the Hawks, and yet the franchise still couldn't win a Stanley Cup with either netminder. Belfour was the starter during the brief Belfour Hasek years. The Hawks made the 1992 Stanley Cup championship round with Belfour and Hasek both on the roster. It was also a Chicago team with Chris Chalios leading the defenseman and forward Jeremy Roenick was on this Hawks team as well. Led by captain Dirk Graham, the Hawks went on a very impressive winning streak in the playoffs. After falling to a 2-1 series deficit to the St. Louis Blues, the Hawks won their next three games against the Blues, as well as back-to-back -back series sweeps against the Detroit Red Wings and the Edmonton Oilers. Just like that, 11 consecutive victories saw the Blackhawks four wins away from ending up as the last team standing. The only team in their proverbial way? The NHL's version of the Super Mario Brothers, otherwise known as Mario Lemieux and Yammer Yager. 
The Pittsburgh Penguins were the defending cup champions, and after nearly beating the Washington Capitals in Game 7 during Round 1, the Pens found their way in the finals thanks to winning 8 of their last 10 games. Hasek was probably Chicago's better goalie entering the playoffs, as the Dominator earned all rookie honors and went 10-4-1 during his 15 starts between the pipes. Between a contract holdout from Belfort and Crazy Eddie missing games this season due to personal reasons, Hasek was turning into a fan favorite, while Belfort was the more controversial choice in net. However, head coach and general manager Mike Keenan stuck with Belfort throughout the playoffs. He turned out to be the best cold ender in the postseason not named Tom Barrasso. The problem is Barrasso plays for Pittsburgh, so it was up to Roenick and company to find consistent offense against the Eastern Conference's best goalie. It looked like the Hawks had the Pens right where they wanted them when they took a 4-1 lead during Game 1. But the hockey gods haven't liked Chicago since 1961. Whenever the Hawks can blow a postseason lead during crunch time, they like to do it. The Pens scored four unanswered goals on their home ice, including the game winner with just 13 seconds left in OT. A crushing 5-4 loss for the Hawks, and they never rebounded from it. It was a sweep for the Pens as the Penguins celebrated their championship victory at Chicago Stadium. Hasek even showed during the series that he still had some raw rookie moments, but Belfair clearly wasn't himself. Hasek subbed in for Belfour in Game 4 after Eddie the Eagle gave up two goals on just four shots on goal. Keenan had a tough decision to make between keeping Hasek and Belfour, but with Belfour one year removed from winning the Vezina and Williams M. Jennings trophies for best goalie, Keenan had no choice but to allow Hasek to become expendable. The Sabres then cashed in on the young goalie's athleticism by fleecing the Hawks with a terrible trade request. The Sabres received a future Hall of Famer at Hasek, and the Blackhawks received just future draft considerations and a goalie in Stefan Beauregard, who never played a single minute in the goalie crease. The future draft considerations eventually led to the Hawks drafting Eric Daze in the fourth round. Daze became an all-star left winger, but serious back and herniated disc issues saw the team's promising winger limited to just 74 games in three seasons after his all-star game appearance in 2002. He retired after playing just one game in 2005. That being said, Keenan didn't want there to be a locker room controversy between Hasek and Belfour, and it's easy to say in hindsight when no one knew how great Hasek would become. Unfortunately, Belfour wouldn't even finish his career in Chicago. The Hawks were worried that he would resign with the team, so they shipped him off to San Jose for three players I personally never heard of until I googled them. Ulf Dahlin, Michael Sikora, and Chris Terreri. Terreri was put in a very tough position of trying to fill Belfour's shoes in net. He never got close to reaching Belfour's milestone achievements. Blackhawk fans kept asking themselves, is this team curse? The 1999 Stanley Cup Final pitted Belfour against Hasek as the Dallas Stars took on the Buffalo Sabres. Belfour eventually won the cup over Hasek in the series, although Hasek won more cups than the Eagle once he began playing for the Red Wings. The Blackhawks managed just one more Western Conference Finals appearance with Belfort Net, and they wouldn't get back to the Western Conference Finals until last season. No one ever wishes someone to die, but success seemed to reach the Blackhawks once Bill Wirtz passed away from complications of cancer on September 26, 2007. His son, Rocky Wirtz, took over the team, and during their first season with Rocky as the CEO, the Hawks finished above 500. For
Head to the action at beautiful Foxville uh, Ice Arena. Kyle Smith alongside Bob Bosaway. And it's 8.30 remaining in the period as we started the period. off the boards after it is blue. It'll be nice and it gets red. So 6.48 remaining in the period. Apologize for any of the technical difficulties that we had. We'll make sure to get it better for you next season. Next season? Well, unless they play for nationals. Off the end line. And over to the end line. Out behind the net. Backhanded over. Make sure to pay for the ticket play, ticket plan madness. Five free games plus playoffs plus one Rockford Ice Hogs game. And it's going to be a penalty coming up. It's going to be against Grinton of Blue. I like that. In each little penalty box, there's somebody that opens and closes the doors for them. Face off one by Blue. And a backhanded pass over to Magellan. As Chris Gintis pass. But I like that those pass, that hit the ref there, but I like that the passes are crisp and hard passes. Oh, just missed the net there. Looked like I had a pretty much an open net to shoot into, just missed it. Of course, from this angle, it looked open. Out to the corner, and then out behind the net. Played over to Corkin. That shot right in the glove that time of uh, Easton Bristow. Yeah, see on that shot, I don't know. It, it was a good shot right at the goalie. Of course, he took it with the, the glove, so that means it's gonna be a face off. But there was nobody in front of the net, so there's no screen, there's no deflection. Face off, one by Blue, over to the hash mark. Feeding it over. Out behind the net and out of the corner. Out of the blue line, tapped over off the skate, feeding it over and cycling it to the corner. Out in front, trying to get it on net, didn't get much on it. And they'll cycle it again, retry. He has good redirection attempt. Now if they can get it back up to the point. Nope, not quite, so it should be able to be cleared. Puck received by Blues, e e Evan Kuntz. And then over to the blue line. Out front, backhanded pass as he was Trying to feed Ma uh, Marty Nitsch. Neutralized now. 
With it is Carnesi. He is an academic scholar, by the way. Now chance for Blue, able to get back into his net quickly is Aaron Tinker. Fortunately, because that was a good shot at a good angle to go in the net if he didn't get back. Some real nice hustle there from Blue, almost having the lead. Now in his own zone, as it's played by Vale. As Vale takes his time, 11 seconds remaining on the penalty. Shorthanded attempt coming. Ewing with it, his shot, easy save, and he'll cover it up. And just one second remaining on the penalty. Yeah, nowhere to go with it. He's at a tight angle, the goalie's right there. I think the only spot possibly where the, the puck could have gone in if it was hit hard enough would have been the top right of the goalie, our top left from our angle. <laughs> the other hockey teams playing soccer, kind of like a big hacky yeah, sack Yeah, just game. trying to stay loose. As no more penalty, back to even strength. Oh man, what a hit that was as it was delivered by Mark Shukin. And the hits are gonna get bigger because the players are getting older. Shot, stick save, and able to handle it. Didn't go the way he wanted to though. He wanted to just stick it and get it out in front. Then it went up in the air and he had to glove it quickly. Otherwise it would have been a garbage goal. Well, yeah, it was wise to catch that. He had two uh, blue players, you know, if that ball, ball hit that puck and hit the ice, you know, let's say if that ball had hit the court, there were a couple players there could have hit it into the net. Uh-oh. Another good save. That's gonna make the highlight film again. We thought for sure that was going to be a goal. It was a great move. Deke to the left, skated to the right, looked like the net was wide open, took a shot, and the glove just stuffed the shot right at the stick. I think Blue thought they for sure pulled within one, but didn't. At the blue line, Saunders, almost a dangerous pass. That shot gloved, and a lot of work right now for Aaron Tinker off the bench. I'm going to say the goalie played baseball earlier in his life. A couple of players couldn't make it uh, at baseball commitments. It's beautiful weather today for baseball. It is. Well, it's also beautiful weather right here for hockey. <laughs> During the COVID years, everything got pushed back, so I was still covering a national tournament in May. That was weird. And, uh, you know, COVID happened in mid-March. And so opening day for a lot of travel baseball and other teams wasn't until July. That was something. Then we had uh, we had the no slide rule. Remember that where it, uh, because of COVID, if you slid into second, you were automatically out. So there were supposed to be like six feet apart rules. <laughs> Look at that pass between the legs. Another nice move and shot and a save. And again, covered no, up well by Bristow. Yeah, again, nowhere to go with it. A tough angle, the goalie's in the way. At least you get the face off out of it. Then you hope to win the face off. Kick it around, take a shot from the wide side. Otherwise, if he loses face off, now it's going to be a while before you get the puck back. There's a replay on the big screen. Just a tough angle. And then wrapped around to the other side. Puck uh, goes out of play. Yeah, this is where uh, Blue is struggling to, to exit the zone. Good four checking by Red. Part of it, the exit your zone plays are, you know, you have to stay on the basic end, even though they're all-star players. Just haven't worked on knowing for sure where your teammate's gonna be. Puck received off the face-off win. That was a nice clean exit. That's offside, they missed that one. That was pretty blatant, Gasoff was clearly offside you as Bazzoli almost knocked into him. Yeah, you have to play that back and see. You know, the referee obviously said, their linesman said obviously not offside. He just wanted to keep them playing. That's right in front of the net there. Now puck procured by Blue. <laughs> as opposed to acquired. Yeah. Secured by Red. Here comes Tillett. That was a nice move by Tillett. Yeah, 
Feeding it over to Palazzo, out to the corner. Played by Piasecki. Now to the point. And then sent over to Tillett. Getting in the way that passing lane. And then Red back on the attack, out again, behind the yeah. net. Again, it's that Red forecheck. It's been very strong. This has been kind of anti-climatic as this shot wide. It's been pretty much all red today. Blue hasn't had much of a comeback effort thus far. Well, you know what? Blue won the well, first two. Go. Red's got to win one of these, right? Here we go. He's got a half step on the defender, but great poke check. Able to get it away from Robert Gassif, and the net fell off. Nothing more than that. It was just a great poke check, pushed, pushed the puck into the corner. Then right. he had the head first swan dive into the net. And the good thing that net comes off those anchors. It's the age old question. When do you shoot when you feel the pressure of the defense back checking? That defense also made a terrific back check uh, um, poke. I, I just didn't think he was going to reach it like that. This is fantastic. Yeah, he did play. take a, a while. He probably could have shot it in between the blue line and the end line. Probably needed to. Here's the replay. Yeah, and they just fell on his own and slid into the, the side of the net. Actually slid square head on into the post. <laughs> Out to the blue line as Carver sends it in. And now after it is the other number two in Chris Gintas. To the blue line kept in well by blue. That shot by Carver blocked off the glass. Now to neutral ice. Slow moving puck. Here comes Red. Skating into the zone, shot off the glove, rebound try, and Red has it. Now over to the corner. Blue trying to get it out. Instead, it's over to the corner. As after it was Matthew Beccaro, now to neutral ice. And again, Red keeps the puck. Couple of nice handles. Tapped off the boards. Spano was after it. And off the, off the boards, pinching and dumping it in well is Mandarino. Jet had it briefly. Now Ackerson bouncing it off the boards to his uh, teammate that time in Othan. And then out to the hash mark. Othan thought about pinching. He'll stay at his spot instead. Here comes Blue. And they'll uh, break the puck out on the other side. And instead, they change their mind to the other side. Back and forth we go. There's three uh, offensive four checkers in the zone for Red, making it real difficult for Blue Dex at the zone. And yeah, now they got three men back, including Othan. And they're being a little conservative as Red, and you, and you can understand that. Blue wanted a hand pass, but we play on. And here comes Red. Leading the charges, Carnesi, that pass out front. And Carnesi, not only is he better at hockey than me, but he's an <laughs> academic scholar. He's two for, oh, two for two. And that does it for the second period. Kind of anticlimactic. Red leading in shots on goal, 21-17. And Blue just hasn't had an answer for both netminders and Aaron Tinker and Nolan Sanderson. Right, and the level of quality shots that they're getting are just getting shut down by the red defense. So a, a, a three to one game going into the third period. We'll see if something changes in the third period for Blue to see if they can dent the net. All right, we're gonna take a break. More hockey action coming up next here on SBS. You. Plato's Closet has athletic wear from all the top brands. Um, joggers, anyone? Our prices will get you moving, and we'll pay cash for your stuff. Buy and sell right here at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet has athletic wear from all the top brands. Um, joggers, anyone? Our prices will get you moving, and we'll pay cash for your stuff. Buy and sell right here at Plato's Closet. And face-off won by Blue as we start play here in the third period of action. Off the boards, and actually that was right on target pass. That's stolen away by Red. 
past the blue line. That shot wide off the stick of Shukin. And the other 13 and Nitch has it. Well, partner, uh, mathematically speaking, you want to score in the next 830, but you'd ideally like to score in the next five or so minutes. Well, that's exactly right. You know, split the third period into two halves, get one goal per half. Nice save. Excellent save that time by Bristow. That's a game saver thus far. If he scores there, it's definitely going to be a red victory. I was prepared to say uh, we score three goals, and the first goal has to be in the first third. <laughs> that looked like it was going to be a breakaway goal. Well, that's why Bristow and Ingersoll both had GAAs over, I mean, under two, and they're starting today playing in this game. Now over to the hash mark. Well, I, I mean, this is one of those games, I mean, you feel like nothing's happening in a way because the score is just light at 3-1, right? But the, the reality is the defenses are good. They're stymieing the offenses, and the goalies are excellent. And, you know, frankly, it's kind of a low-scoring game, just four goals into the third period. And then out to... Uh, a slot of red over to Gawil. Gawil stop and start move right on target with the pass, just not able yeah. to accept it as Deegan. Yeah, right under his stick was all. And now Deegan's got it. And what can Blue do, partner, in terms of creativity to try to score a goal here? Um, like you know, like any professional team will say. Or they scored right there. How about that? Stay with it, right? Deflections, get in front of the net. Don't change anything. Don't. <laughs> Don't pull the goalie yet. Man, hockey can change in a second, yes, a it split can. second. Isn't that amazing how that happens? It looked like it was going to be an easy red victory, and that's why the old adage goes, a two-goal lead is the worst one to have in a hockey game. I noticed after the goal, the um, mixer stayed on all good. It did. I didn't go too high with the decibel level. <laughs> There's a shutoff switch when the decibels yeah, go right. above airplane mode. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, Red still leads in shots on goal. They still lead the game. Was that a goal that uh, Aaron Tinker should have saved? Maybe. No, it was too much. It deflected too much. I, I, yeah, it maybe is a good answer to that. It's five hole. That's always the weakest part of a goalie. But then again, it was right in front of him, and he was expecting the shot. So we have a 3-2, one goal game in the third period. And as I've said in the first two games, those are my favorite kind of games. One goal lead in the third period. They're so fun to watch. One team is trying to shut the other down. The other team is trying their hardest to get that one goal. We have yet to see a netminder get pulled. Will we see it in this game? That's right. We get keep going to overtime, tie games, and not because of a uh, of, uh, an empty net goal. goal. Well, empty net would be by two, right? But No, I'm saying like they pull their goalie and they score with the extra right. attacker. Yeah, we haven't seen that either. I mean, here's, here's the thing, partner. Game one was technically a 4-3 final. In theory, it was 6-4 to four if you count the shootout goals, well, but the really it was 4-3. to three. Yeah, the, right, exactly right. It was a 4-3 game. Because it went to double overtime and double OT is the shootout. Here's Vaccaro. Chance for Vaccaro. Shot. Oh, just couldn't get it on net. This game is very far from over, and Red Team better get their act together or it's going to overtime. Well, I, yeah. They have, oh, oh terrible was, pass. Shot, he scores! Back to the action, Kyle Smith alongside Bob Bilsaway, 4-2 game. And it's gonna be no icing. And then back over to Palazzo. Palazzo. But now, but now instead of a 3-2 game, it's a 4-2 game. It's gonna be a lot tougher for Blue with only 13.50 to go to get both those goals. 
So like we were saying early, divide that 13.50 in half, and you got to score in about the next six or seven minutes. And then that stops play at 13.38. Yeah, then if there's a, a one-goal game at three or two minutes to go pull the goalie, I guess it's an all-star game, so there's no harm in pulling the goalie down by two. Makes for an exciting finish. Face off one by blue. That shot. I mean, partner, if he doesn't make that pass, things were getting very interesting, and now it just seems like the game's over. Well, I, w I would not absolutely say it's over. It's just a two goal lead, but you got to score in the next, whatever, six or seven minutes. Or I guess, you know, purists would say score in about within 10 minutes and then pull the goalie the last two or three to try to tie it. Yeah, but the earlier you score, the less stressed out you feel like when you put all that effort in the next 10 minutes to score, and then you finally do, now you gotta put even more effort to tie the game. That's something that's underestimated. To tie that score, it, it takes so much effort, but that's what they need to do. Right, but you'd like to score now so that you don't feel the pressure with under six minutes to go. This is a bad pass. One of the few mistakes that either goalie's made today, but that was a big mistake Boy, by Bristow. Wasn't it, yeah, on a highlight film, that's uh, <laughs> That'll be shown how not to, to net mind. It's okay to freeze. <laughs> not all the time, but sometimes you just got to freeze the puck, take the cautious route, and well, you did do that. Yeah, and it was also fantastic anticipation yeah, by the I red mean, team a, intercepting that pass. It was an all-star play off a mistake. Exactly. That and that's well sometimes put. what hockey is and all sports are. You win by not making any mistakes and taking advantage of other teams' mistakes. Yep, well put. Hockey's no different. And sometimes the perfect shot will beat the perfect goalie or vice versa. A great shot is stopped by a perfect goalie. That's what makes hockey great. I mean, that's why John Sebastian Jaguer won the Conn Smythe Trophy. He was one win shy of his Mighty Ducks winning it all. And they swept the two-seeded uh, Red Wings that season. That shot a little bit wide. Uh, that was well under control. It was a good shot just wide, right? Hockey's like that sometimes. Of course, I remember that year where Jonathan Quick and the number eight seeded LA Kings during the old um, NHL playoffs where the eight seed played the one seed. And actually, you would have to play the highest seed remaining. So if the two seed won in the first round, the eight seed would have to play the two seed in the Western Conference semifinals. Yeah, there, that happened a couple times. I don't remember if it was that series that caused that, but then they reseeded after the... Yeah, uh, now, yeah. Now they have the two uh, divisions for each conference, and they have uh, the number one seed of each conference plays the wild card team, and then the number two seed of each division plays the three seed. I don't know. I miss the old days of one versus eight, two versus seven, but what was happening is that some of these eight seeds were upsetting the one seeds because hockey's one of those interesting games. If you have the better netminder, sometimes that's all you need. Well, what ha was happening, eight would beat one, and then eight would then get to play five right or something well, like that well the old rules were eight would have to play two in the next round because it was the highest seed remaining then they switch it to one eight plays the winner of four five then they switch it to the two divisions for each conference moral of the story is just get john <laughs> sebastian jaguer on your team and you can beat anybody or jonathan quick Just because you have the best goalie doesn't mean you're going to win. Remember how long it took for Dominic Hasek to win a, win a uh, Stanley Cup? Well, young players, I mean, it, it takes time to figure out the league. The speed of the game, to get stronger, smarter, more mature. There's lots of reasons why veterans win. Isn't it something of all those Stanley Cups that Montreal has won? The last time they won it was 93 when Patrick Waugh was on the team. Well, it, of course, all those championships were won when there's also fewer teams in the league than yeah. there are now. And, you know, there's salary caps and other things to make everybody even. You know, getting the dynasty in, in a sport like hockey now, <laughs> it's not going to happen easily. Yeah. Any sport with a salary cap. Here we Here go. Here comes Jet. His shot. Good save that time by Tinker. And interesting decision that will happen for blue team. If they're down by more than two or two goals, with five minutes or less to go, 
will they do the gamesmanship route of pulling the netminder, or will they just play normal hockey unless it gets to be one goal down? It'll be interesting to see what they do. Let's assume a two-goal lead. I think with about two and a half minutes to go, they might consider pulling the goalie. Um, then you try to get, you know, obviously a goal within that minute and a half, and then you pull the goalie a second time with only down by one. So I think we'll see it. So I'm going to bet that they do. But it is an all-star game. You might decide, well, it's not. That shot high. Vaccaro off the side of the net. As Grinton was trying to feed it to the end line. Mandarino, he pinched. I mean, you have to pinch now. You're down two goals with 9.14 to go. Yeah, the blue team has to pinch. I think the reality is the red team can just get back. Yeah, you could play just three men back the rest of the game. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I just don't let anybody score again. Oh, my gosh, that was just an amazing hockey analysis, Bob. Don't let anybody score again? Yeah, don't let anybody score again. And did you know, Bob, that if you score more goals than the other team, you'll win? <laughs> But we want both teams to win, don't we? We, want a, we want a tie so we can see it overtime. So what, so we can have s'mores and sing kumbaya by the fire? Is that shot? Oh, no, look at that. Oh, my goodness, Got it's it. still not in the net. Got now he scores. Some tricky uh, hand-eye coordination with the stick right out in front. But there was like two or three blue players right in front of the net, and the you know, red team just did not get back on defense. It was almost as if, all right, Blue's not going to score. Let's get the puck and go up ice. There's that man we talked about, the really smart guy, and that was... Smart hockey at its finest. Here we see the replay in front of us on the big board. Off the skate, stick handle, stick handle, stick handle, loose puck, shot, he scores. Not only did he score, partner, he went top shelf at point blank range. Which is why the score was able to be made. If he had gone lower with it, obviously the goalie who was sprawled would have made the save. So we got a 4-3 game now with 8.31. That's what we were talking about. Get one of the goals with, uh, about halfway through that 16 or 17 minute period. Now they're thinking, obviously, they can, can score right here. <laughs> Man, how big was that mistake by oh, uh, yeah. Boris Bristow? It would be a 3-3 game right now. Right. Well, we're hoping for a 4-4 game and some more overtime. Well, you are. Uh, the coaching staff for Red might want to finish <laughs> yeah. this one up. You might want to argue with me a little bit. Red teams led by Nick Polos from the Vikings, assisted by John Grunler and Anthony Monti. Blue team led by Bob Gassoff, assisted by Mikhail Yakubu. Yakubov and Paul Kavanda. I mean, that's a hockey name for you, Mikhail Yak Yakubov. <laughs> that's like when you watch Miracle, I mean, the center for Russia has just the most stereotypical Russian hockey name, Boris Mikhailov. <laughs> yeah, that's just Boris. That's just so Russian hockey. Two-line pass. I don't like that idea, partner. You're up by a goal. Don't force it there. Uh, that shot and good save by Tinker. Yeah, every shot gets scary because you got a 4-3-3 lead. So every shot the blue team takes, right, could tie this up. Final reminder, the text line's open. Your favorite high school, college, or NHL memory. Text 330-957-7653. So the blue team is trying to get somebody to score this goal, right? Some more excellent hockey analysis. And Robert Gassoff has three shots on goal. Eric Ewing has three shots on goal, and Will Grinton has three shots on goal, and that's leading for the blue team. Keegan bovey has been fabulous on the faceoffs. He's eight of 11 for red. You win faceoffs, you win hockey games. That's a faceoff win for blue, and just barely making that save is Tinker. Mitch Goel has uh, four shots on goal leading the red team. That's yeah. a good way to clear the puck, but this should be icing also. And a couple players for blue with three shots on goal. Make it three players now. Watch out for Robert Gassoff, who you talked about. We see the fourth one there in real time. A lot of face-offs for Piasecki. He's 9 of 17 in terms of face-offs one. A lot of face-offs. We have at least 54. Under seven minutes to go. Nice toe drag and stolen away by Blue. Out to neutralize. Here comes Shukin. Shukin shot, pad save. Not a great shot there, but almost hit the side of the net if it wasn't saved by Tinker. 
That shot, that one was oh, a nice one. That's another one. Now it's right into the goalie's gut, right? But there was every shot, everything blue takes. Danger, danger. So quality what? shot. That was two quality shots since they pulled within one goal. So, Bob, obviously, when you think of stereotypical hockey, I'll always pull the netminder with under a minute 30. But technically, you could pull Bristow anytime you want. Well, this is what I'm talking about. If there's like a penalty and you have a chance to go on the power play, I think you pull the goalie because the netminder in your own end is not helping you any. So put somebody on the offense and then try yeah. to tie the score with a pulled goalie while you've got a penalty box situation. That was a really heads up play yeah. by Marty Nitsch. What he did is he accepted the pass and he wanted to do a quick little move under the legs of the defender. That shot he scores! Oh, jeez. And that might be the dagger. It is just not Bristol's day today. It's just not Blue's day, at least not this game. Every time they get close, they give up another one. So and now they got to score a goal within the next three minutes, right? And then pull the goalie and get that second one. Wow, that's too bad, but it's deflected. Well, that's uh, Keegan Carnesi, and the goal was scored by Will Grinton by Blue. So I had the 14s mixed up, but. It, the issue is, partner, is you're so tired. It took you all that effort to make it four to three. You had to recover from the mistake made by your netminder in Bristol. And after you do, made all that effort, and then a little dinky goal scores to make it five to three. And now you have to reset your brain all over again. It does drain you emotionally on those kinds of plays. You, you're catching up, you're catching up. You put all the physical effort in to tie it, or to pull within one, and then the goal like that just deflates you. Well, we'll see how Blue responds. I mean. Got the best of the best out here. That was maybe high sticking, no call. He didn't try to push at the pocket, just went off his stick above his shoulder. Here we go, two on one. We got two players back checking, shot, oh he missed. Off the side of the net. Well partner, we do the three stars of the game. I, I would be shocked if blue team scored twice in the next 528. Yeah, I can't argue that. So we're going to look at our stats right now. Did anybody score twice? Oh, nope. How about that, partner? Is that shot? He scores. Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness gracious. That's a soft goal. 5-4. Well, I, you know, you have to assume that the goalie was screened and didn't see it. And I couldn't tell if the puck was actually deflected or not. It looked yeah. like it might have been. I think it just went off his blocker and in the net. Yeah. They're going to credit the goal to Thomas Saunders. So 5-4, down by just one now with five minutes to go. But the blue, the blue team is now seemingly able to score relatively at will. And it's one off his blocker into the net. Yeah, so don't panic at that last goal. But get it before a minute and a half, right? So you don't have to pull the goalie. And then we go to overtime. Like I said, any time it gets under two minutes, if it's deep in their end, I say just do it. Some coaches just overthink it and they wait too long. And when it gets under a minute and you still haven't pulled him yet, that's just, first of all, the goalie's got to get to the bench. And this almost happened. You weren't there. But this happened during a uh, playoff game between Fenwick and, and uh, Bennett where the Fenwick goalie, he was only halfway to the bench, and the Fenwick guy jumped over the bench. And they almost called too many men on the ice. Oh, right. Right. He has to have one skate next to the bench before the extra attacker can even think of going onto the ice. That shot. Another you, another shot. You know, you're, every time Blue shoots it, you think they can tie it. Well, if you're red, you got to stay aggressive. You can't be looking up at the clock. Well, exactly right. And it, I wouldn't think they're going to go into a defensive shell, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, you want the kids to have fun. They're just 16 years old. It's an all-star game. This isn't for nationals. Oh, nice defensive play there. Fortunately, got the puck. <laughs> Almost didn't. Can't afford any mistakes if you're blue. If in doubt, just ice. Same thing for red, especially them. If in doubt in your own zone, just, just ice it. Yeah, that would be the advice for red. If you're in doubt on the blue team, of course, I'm kidding here, shoot the puck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good idea, right? Crash net philosophy from your from a tough angle. You shoot towards the other side of the net and hope you get a rebound try. Or just shoot it from this side of the rink. That's okay, too. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. But you're right, though. I mean, like, if, if you're tired, ice it and get a line change. You don't get penalized for it like you do at the NHL level. That shot, 
They screen the netminder, rebound try, just went wide, it was off the stick of Braden Tillett. And you would assume for red team especially, short shifts the rest of the game. Keep everybody fresh. Tillett, now on the stick of Piasecki. And yeah, not one of my Barrett. favorite coaches, right, but Bobby Keenan of the, ha of the Blackhawks way back when kind of, to me, started the 30-second shifts. Shifts are always longer than 30 seconds, but near the end of the game, he was just putting players out there for 30 seconds win sprints and just don't let them score on your 30-second increment. So how about this, partner? For each team, it's a 5-4 game, but nobody has scored two goals. It's a team effort for both teams tonight. Teams win rings and they win Stanley Cup titles, or if you have uh, Wayne Gretzky on your team. <laughs> that always helps. Well, the Hawks have Bedard now. I mean, that's a good start. I got to get somebody else there. Who was the best player? Oh, Brian Trottier, right, on those uh, Islanders teams yeah, that won four in a row? Yeah, he was pretty special. Then they got Messier. No, Messier was on the Oilers. Oh, right, but then they got Messier. No, he played for the Rangers. Do I have my New York teams mixed up? Yeah, you blew that one. Oh, no. On the air, I blew that. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Yeah, he was with the Rangers, but. Yeah, Messi that Oilers team was something. Messier, Yari Curry, let's see, Rob Lowe, was it not Rob Lowe, but somebody Lowe, Mark Lowe? Rob Lowe. Yeah, not Rob Lowe, <laughs> somebody Lowe, and Rob of course, Lowe. Grant Fuhrer. I wonder how many team, Hall of Famers that team ended up with, four maybe, five? It's a shame that uh, Gretzky got traded to the Kings. How many more rings would they would have won if it never happened? He's offside. There's yeah. the call. <laughs> I, always, I always feel like that. You know, Montana got traded from San Francisco to KC, didn't win again, but Steve Young won in San Francisco. So had Montana stayed in San Francisco, would he still have won that same ring that Steve Young won? Anyway, here we are, 5-4, one goal lead with 258. So we're hopefully going to see a pulled goalie soon. I personally would like to see Blue score to tie the game up so we can go to another exciting overtime. It's, it's just pure joy watching these hockey teams play against each other. I just don't know if, if Blue has it in them. Well, when you pull the goalie. Right. I just, how emotionally drained are they? They've had to come back from so many two-goal deficits. 3-1, three 4-2, to 5-3, to three, that shot. They almost tied it up there, though. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're still fighting. I, they're giving it everything they got. I mean, that would be pretty magical, right? Oh, by the way, it was also 2 to nothing. Yeah. 2 nothing. 3 to 1, 4 to 2, 5 to 3. That's the thing. Every time they pulled close, they just couldn't get the, you know, couldn't close the door or couldn't, couldn't finish, I guess you'd say. Give credit to Red. They didn't uh, take their foot off the gas. Well, that's the thing. Both teams are good. Whoever put these two all-star teams together did such a great job making the teams relatively even. Now here's, uh, here's a mess in front of the net. And you know, you know, there's still kids too. Yeah. So right. this is, even though it's an all-star game, they've got homework tomorrow. <laughs> well, Dad, I was just going to say, Bristow and the other players are going to watch the game film, and they're still going to learn from this because they played players that are just as good as them or even better. Look at that spin move, no look pass. And if you're red, partner, do you stay all out aggressive, or do you play a little monkey in the middle? I would try to keep the puck in the, in the blue zone as long as possible. And as soon as the puck comes out of the blue zone, the blue goalie should be pulling, but he is not. Here comes Kuhn, slow-moving puck, and they call a very slow offside. I mean, if you're going to call it, call it right away. All right, let's see what they do with the goalie. Nothing. I don't think you can because offside, remember, it's outside the zone. Well, you could pull here, but sometimes, the, you know, the, you'll get a 20-yard head start toward the 20-yard 20, 20 head start. Do we use yards in hockey increments, hockey measurements? <laughs> well, he's got a few feet head start there. So do we consider hockey a North American game or a European game? Oh, North American. But if you were asking, you know, Canada or U.S., I think you know that answer. Right. Right? I mean, yeah. when you Googled it, you, you didn't believe me. But, yeah, hockey began in ancient Egypt. I had to look. I had to fact check you on that one. Yeah. Not this version of hockey. Yeah, well. Right. Just like when the ancient Mayans were playing their version of basketball, it wasn't today's version of basketball. So there was some whispering between the defense and the goalie. So maybe you got some coachly, coachly instructions to see if he gets out of the net. 
115 I, to go. He's still in the net. I would do it now. Here he goes. Yeah, it waited a little too long, I think. Yeah. 107 to go. And if you're red, still play your game. You don't have to dump and chase. You don't have to shoot it on net either. Just get the puck in deep however you can. Well, and that's what blue needs to do, dump and chase. Yeah. I'm saying red, you don't just have to try to get the empty net or goal. Just play your normal hockey. This is trouble. One on one. This should do it. And he scores! <laughs> That'll do it. They're going to credit it to number 15, Jack Jacenis. And no surprise here. You just felt like after Bristow made that mistake, it felt like it was going to be Red's day. Well, you have to say that that's the difference in the game. That really ugly mistake or that very good read by the Red team on, on the steal and then the goal, right? But um, it wouldn't have been a you know one goal game without that. They came back though, it was four to two, then five to three. That other goal that uh, was scored by Carnassi, that one hurt too. Not as much as the Bristol mistake, but. So we have two, what was it, blue wins and now a red win? Yeah, remember though, blue won by the <laughs> hair of their chin. <laughs> you know, one off uh, shootout and one in overtime. This time red clearly wins in regulation. Well, if we're doing NHL points, don't you get a, tie, uh, a point for those two losses? Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, so we'd be dead even here, right? All right, see, so yeah. So the 18U game in terms of points, that'll be the clincher. Right, so whoever wins, blue or red, and the 18s wins today's uh, all-star tournament. It's a good way to view it. Red still playing on, and that will do it for the game. A 6-4 final. Kind of the score you usually expect from an all-star game. At first, it looked like it was going to be that close 1-0, 2-1, 3-2 game. And then some cheap goals that were scored, some that Tinker and Bristow, the old saying, I'd like to have one of those back. It happened. It does happen in a hockey game. But Tinker and Sanderson are the winning goalie duo, and uh, Bristow and, and Ingersoll the losing duo today. But uh, an exciting enough game that went down to a one goal, you know, pull the goalie affair at the end until the finally the empty net happened. So it was a good, close, fun, exciting game that Blue just couldn't get over the hump there. So let's do the three stars of the game. I'll make my picks. I'll do Marty Nitsch, a goal and an assist. Braden Tillett, a goal and an assist. And uh, I'll pick somebody from Blue. There were a couple players with two assists. And I'll pick London Jet. What say you in terms of uh, the three stars of the game? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to just leave those with you and let it go. I'll let you pick those three. No arguments, rebuttals, yeah, no, no, protests? No rebuttals, no protests. Okay, fair enough. You could make the argument uh, it was a big game for Williamson. He had two assists, and he saw 16 total faceoffs. He won uh, 10 of them, but it just seemed like every time London Jet had the puck, things were getting done well for blue team. He, had a, he did have a good game. And that's the thing, you know, sometimes the stats are overrated. You know, you have to watch the players. Who did the dirty work in you know, center ice when you didn't get credit for the assist, but you caused the check that gave up their, the puck, got the turnover or something like that. So uh, it was a, just a very, very well-played game between two all-star teams. Yeah. Let's not forget Drew McLean. He had a goal and two assists, and I might have to uh, rebuttal myself. I might put McLean in there over London Jet because I do see that McLean had the goal and two assists, but... However you slice it, it was an offensive affair, not so much a defensive affair in this one. Right. Um, sometimes you have to kind of remember, you know, which name did you say more than any other? And then that person was, you know, getting the puck, hustling toward the puck, you know, fighting the board battles. Sometimes those are the ones that are, are the ones that are really the heroes. All right, we're going to take a break. I'll go down to ice level for our 16U postgame interview. And the 18U pregame show coming up next here on SBS, a broadcasting network for everyone. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. SBS offers live telecasts on channel 59.3, YouTube, or Twitch. We include pre- and post-game interviews with the players. You know, I started in the locker room. All the boys were getting going before the game and stuff, and uh, we kind of found a little click at the beginning of the game, so I think that's what got us going. We also include digital live statistics, play-by-play -play commentary, team highlight reels, and even more than that. Go online to sportsbroadcastsolutions.com or search Sports Broadcast Solutions on YouTube. SBS, a broadcasting network for everyone. 
Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. At SBS, we offer a professional broadcasting experience for the non-professional athlete. Just like the pros, we offer everything for you. Play-by-play -play commentary. A no-hitter at Kane County Stadium. 15 strikeouts, one walk, one air, and that's it. Color commentary, highlight reels, recruiting videos, and much, much more. Unlike our competitors, we zoom in on the action and always have a live scoreboard with a live time code. If you're ready to have your next sporting event feel like CBS Sports, then make sure to call Sports Broadcast Solutions today. Our phone number is 330-957-7653, or you can go online to sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. SBS, a broadcasting network for everyone. Missing your child's sporting event just plain stinks. But you don't have to worry about that anymore, thanks to Sports Broadcast Solutions. SBS is a live broadcasting network, as well as covering your on-demand needs, recruiting videos, highlight reels, and much, much more. We can broadcast live to any website, and we also post as much on-demand content as you need. For more information about SBS, check out our website at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Let SBS broadcast your sporting event. We have experience and can generate excitement and permanent digital memories for your team. Tonight. That time, finally a goal for the Stampede! We have professional videographers using high-definition modern-day cameras, color analysts, and play-by-play -play announcers with state-of-the-art, classy graphical scoreboards to keep you updated. Plus, we have commercials to advertise your team, club, or sponsor, and us. Plus, we do pre-game and post-game interviews. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the post-game show brought to you by Marion Central Catholic. My name's Kyle Smith, but my name doesn't matter. These young ladies matter. It's senior night as the Hurricanes win a battle down the stretch, 48 to 46. Hi, I'm Carrie Kramer. Um, I swim 50 breast, uh, 50 free, and 100 back. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Instead of spending hundreds or thousands with all these college recruits, in addition, we put together highlight reels for teams 